prisoner to be released. Gordon Call. Gordon Call, prisoner 97961. These are the terms of your probation as set forth by the court. You must report to your probation officer within three days. You must adhere to the probation plan. You must remain in the jurisdictional area. You must grant a permission to leave by the federal authorities. You uh, need a ticket to North Dakota? What you saying? Do you need a ticket back to North Dakota? No, I don't need uh, nothing from the government. You, uh, you're acting kind of tough for somebody done time for nothing but not paying your taxes. I bet you're going to pay them now. <laughs> nope. Farmer still got an attitude. Didn't you learn anything in Leavenworth? Yeah. I learned that a nigger with a badge is still just a nigger. Get your stuff out front and get out of here. Sure. So how was it in there? Well, I'll tell you one thing, they'll never get me back. What's new at home? More people are losing their farms. Good. Maybe now they'll listen. Mom had Uncle Bob pay the tax lien on the farm. Oh, she shouldn't have done that. No. She shouldn't have done that. I want you out of here tomorrow morning. The government was going to take it. It's worth more than we owed. Where do you expect me to go? I don't care where you go. Why don't you go to your brother Bob's place? Daddy, you crazy? She had to go to Uncle Bob for help. The IRS would have taken the farm. You just keep your mouth shut. I'm not going to stand by here while you throw my mother out of our home. You can go, too. Dad, are you OK? I want to, uh, I want to thank you how you took care of the guns. You know, I wouldn't let you down, Dad. No. Thank you, sir. Now 35. 35. Now 40, 40, 40. Now 45 everywhere. 
This is the fifth farm sale I've been to in a month. And uh, you know why? Because of the Jew bankers and the federal loan agency, you see. They're in this thing together. They've foreclosed on thousands of farms across the United States. What good will it do them unless they know more about farming than we do? No, you don't understand. Just think, once they control the land, they can control the food supply. And once they control the food supply, they could control the world. But it's our government, Gordon. They're our representatives. Oh. Yeah, you're right. It's right. It's our government. Our government. Our government that lowers the crop prices. That's our government. It's our governments that raise the taxes. That's our government. And it's our government that took the farm away. We have niggas in Washington, D.C., living on welfare checks who live better than any one of us here. Well, now, that's damn sure true. How do you figure on fighting the government? You just don't pay taxes, you understand? That's what I did. I didn't pay taxes, and I went to jail for it, you understand? And I will never pay taxes. OK, that's enough of that. Now, we got some stuff here. I want you guys to look at this material. We got a group, it's called the Posse Comitatus, that uh, meets every Sunday afternoon, and we kind of discuss these problems. We only our group is a little different, because I think in my heart, we have solutions. Okay, excuse me, gentlemen. What do you want? I want to come home. It's been too long. Well, are you ready to repent? Are you ready to uh, conform to the laws of God and his commandments? I just want to be around the children. Please. I come home. Okay. Agent Maberly. Yes, sir. I'm Ken Muir, Federal Marshal here. Pleasure. Good to meet you. Gentlemen, this is Agent Richard Maberly from the FBI office in Chicago. I you already know Roger Sims. Good to see you again, Raj. That's Carl Greenwood, Deputy Marshal here in Fargo. And this is Jim Hobson, Bob Chester from our Bismarck office. Pleasure. Sir, can I get you a cup of coffee or anything? Uh, yeah, I think I will. Uh, drink it at your own risk. These guys make it thick enough to float a horseshoe. We'll just try to keep you on your toes, Bob. Gentlemen, the continuing saga of Gordon Call. I has chosen a white man to be supreme. That's my own personal choice. I didn't pay taxes for about five years. That's this is the, uh, from a television IRS show he was on in Texas. That just shows you that uh, paying taxes doesn't mean anything. I think any intelligent, superior-minded, white human being, Christian, knows that paying taxes is like giving uh, gifts to the synagogue of Satan. I mean, for me, I feel he's like... already done a year in Leavenworth, and he's still preaching tax protests. Ladies and gentlemen... We also have him on probation violation. Wait a minute. You dragged me out to the boondocks for a probation violation on a tax charge? There's more to it than that. He is also a white supremacist. He uh, is stockpiling guns. He also says he's going to kill anybody who tries to arrest him. Sounds like some kind of crackpot. He is a crackpot. 
and he's damn dangerous. I think the only way to settle this thing without bloodshed is to try to negotiate with him. Well, I don't agree with that. Has anybody tried to serve a warrant? Several times, but he's not an easy man to corner. I've been working down there with local deputy Leland Winters, but somebody always warns him off. Well, the posse comatatus has done a good job of keeping him away from us. His prison profile says he's a religious fanatic with schizophrenic characteristics. He's also a crack shot with a high-powered rifle. Then we proceed with care, gentlemen. But we proceed. Posse Comitatus is in 23 states, 78 separate chapters. How big is it out here? It's growing. We've also got KKK, right-wing survivalists, neo-Nazis. I know the type. Little men with big ideas. Guys like them are all cut from the same cloth. They all preach hate, and they all got guns. Well, you know, it's been hard times for the farmers out here. The whole world's hard. Everybody wants to blame their problems on somebody else instead of taking responsibility for themselves. Look, I'm not condoning their actions. I'm just telling you the root of the problem. These farmers ought to make up their minds. They complain about big government, but they still want their price supports. My parents came to this country to make a better life for themselves and their kids. They didn't blame their problems on anyone. Scott, are you going to be at the posse meeting in Medina? Yeah, Gordon, I thought I would. I'll see you there. Yes, sir. Would it be all right if I come along? I'd like to see Ellen and visit a while. is here. He's in town for a posse meeting. He's down at Doc Harnett's clinic out on the edge of town. Uh, just started. Should be here uh, two or three hours. I'll get a hold of Ken Muir and Fargo. You stake them out until we get there. Gotcha. Hello, Ken Muir. Hi, Bob. Hello. It's Ken Muir. Yeah, Ken. Hi, Roger. Listen, one of our deputies down in Medina has got a line on Gordon Call. And since you've been head-to-head -head with him, I thought maybe you'd like to come along for the ride. Nope. And I got to tell you again, I don't think this is the way to go after him. Call Maberly? Now, he's been called back to Chicago for the weekend. Listen, Call's not going to wait for us. We've got to move fast on this. OK. Good luck. Thanks. Sorry to disturb you, Chief Douglas. Uh, can I borrow a two-way radio? Sure, Leland. Uh, come on in. Well, I was going to go to my office, but you were closer, and I need this thing for a stakeout. Oh, what stakeout? I didn't hear anything about a stakeout. It's federal. It's uh, U.S. Marshals out of Bismarck at Fargo coming to arrest Gordon Call. They want me to keep an eye on them before they get here. They're crazy. They try and take Call, and they're in for a world of hurt. Call them back. Tell them not to come. <laughs> they're not going to drop it. Can I borrow that radio? OK. Just a minute. Thanks. Do you want to ride with me? I don't want to get mixed up in this. I don't think I could shoot somebody I know if it came down to it. OK. We'll take care of it. Thanks a lot. Sooner or later, outsiders will threaten our way of life. That is why we must agree to our new charter. Yeah, well, I'm not going to agree on a charter like that. No way. Gordon, your racist views run counter to the religious nature of this organization. All people, even blacks and Jews, 
deserve to be protected. Doc, you know as well as I do the Jews run the banks. That's the problem. We're talking about a local bank. We don't even have any Jews around here. Cy Wilson, the pharmacist over in Jamestown, is a Jew. This is just plain crazy. If you go on with this, we can quit this meeting right now. I will not tolerate this kind of malarkey in any movement I'm a part of. And maybe you, uh, maybe you should just get out of the posse, Doc. Look, Gordon, the posse may mean racism to you. It doesn't to me. As far as I'm concerned, we're here to help our neighbors, not make them fear us. If the posse ever stops standing for local justice, that'll be the day that this organization and I part company. Now, can we get on with it? Sure. Sure, Doc. You, uh, you get on with it. Leland. We're in position here. Ken Muir is on his way down from Fargo. Sit tight. Gotcha. It has been moved and seconded. Doc. Sorry for interrupting, Doc, but we're being watched. We better get a look. You, uh, you better give our friend a call right away. He said it's a federal operation, the marshals. It's just Leland Winters, local deputy. He's always watching things. You want me to go up there and see what he's up to? No, I know what he's up to. Give me the gun. What is it? What's going on? Nothing's going on. Bob, they're on the move. My guess is they're headed back toward Heaton. I'm going to come to you. Come on, Gordon, you can ride with me. You got now, ride with Yuri. Gordon, they got a roadblock. This is where it's going to be. So be it. There's police lights out on the road. What in the tarnation? Hello? <laughs> Dana, get away from the window. Kids, come on, let's go. John.
Get my gun. No, Yuri, it's not you they want. They want dead. I gotta help. No, Yuri! Get out! U.S. Marshals, put down your weapons. Yuri. Not like I'm going to miss. You better back off. Put down your weapon. Look, there's no need for anybody to be killed over anything like this. Ken. We need more units. We don't have more units. What do you want? I want him, Gordon Call. I thought I told you. You better back off. Damn it, Ken. We're face to face with these guys. We're in deep here. Move up. Coming down. Yori! He's breaking for the trees. Go! Put your weapons down and we'll talk about this. This isn't worth a life, Cole! Officer down. Let's go, guys. We have bad.
take it easy. Get down there and help the others. Good God. Give me water, sponges. Lots of them. No, he's going to die. Oh, Doug, is he going to die? I'm doing what I can. You have to leave, Joan. Let me work. Helen. Joan, come on. I was afraid this was going to happen. We gotta get them both to the hospital in Jamestown. We could have talked this out instead of shooting. Well, it's a little late for that. Leland, what are you doing out there with the federal marshals? Did you forget you were raised in this town? You gone too far. You're killing people? I could have killed you. I know that. Get that gun out of here. It's a heck of a thing to do, Gordon, to shoot at people over a little income tax. It's a little more than taxes. Is it worth getting your son shot? To me, it was. Lester Tompkins, all members of the posse. Called it the most damaged show. He, he shot Bob Cheshire point blank. He executed him. You're sure it was Carl? Hell yeah. I talked to him at the clinic after. What? The ambulance took us all to Doc Ernest's clinic in Medina, and there he was. All of you were there? It's the closest doctor. Yori was there, and I guess Carl came to see how he was. Well, what is it with this place? You guys shoot the hell out of each other, then get together later for a beer? Why didn't you take him right there? He was armed. 
Mister, he killed Bob Cheshire. Don't you think I would have gone for him if I could have? Where'd he go? Out the door. Out the door? We got warrants. We're already moving on Lundy and Tompkins. What are we going to do? I think what we'll do is go to my place. It's about a half mile down the road. This is Gordon Call. Yes. I'm Agent Richard Maberly, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Do you know where your husband is now? No, I don't. You're going to have to come with us, Mrs. Call. I can't. My son's been hurt. I have to stay here with him. Lady, you're under arrest for murder. Every officer I can get by dawn. I underestimated this guy once. We're not going to do it again. Position, sir. Garden call. This is the FBI. Come out with your hands over your head. That damn dog. Call. Send in the assault team. All right, SWAT! Let's go! Let's move up! Go! Go! Go!
Call's not in there. There's a stockpile of weapons and a bunch of these plastic comotatis pamphlets. Wasn't there. All right, let's talk, gentlemen. Gordon Kong, where is he? What are you asking us for? We don't know nothing. Drop dead. I want a lawyer. I gotta go back. My family's there. My wife, my kids. It's my whole life. Well, you go back and they ain't gonna never leave you alone. I got no place else to go. We killed them, Gordon. They were like us. It doesn't make any sense. They were Federals, but they were like us. You want to go back, you go back. But let's not go around whining. Let's not go around whimpering. Sooner or later, you're going to have to learn to stand up to them. I don't know what to do. You know, World War II, I was a tail gunner on a B-25 bomber. And uh, we were coming back from a mission and all of a sudden, our own planes, they came down on us. Now they, they must have thought that we were the enemies. And they started shooting. So I shot them down. You killed them? But that's because it was self-defense. And that's what this is. This is self-defense, you see. And that's what, uh, that's what this note tells them. Self-defense. James Wickstrom, director of counterinsurgency for the Posse Comitatus and a former U.S. Senate candidate, told his followers the shootout between Gordon Call and federal marshals indicates the government has declared war on the people of this country. Wickstrom's firebrand speech in Bismarck today included a threat to Deputy Sheriff Leland Winters, who was wounded in the shootout. We hold Deputy Winters directly responsible for this. He's a local officer and should not be working with the federal marshals. He knows he can be punished at any time by the Posse Comitatus. Local Police Chief Larry Douglas criticized the federal marshal's attempt to arrest Call. I know Gordon Call. He's always been a God-fearing man and a good neighbor. And what do those federal lawmen do? They shoot his dog. Deputy U.S. Attorney Dan Krebs, who will be prosecuting those involved in the shootout, responded to Douglas's criticism. The marshals tried to arrest Call because he broke the law. It was their duty. That's the kind of men they are. I don't get it. Call guns down two marshals, walks up to one and shoots him point blank in the head while he's wounded, and the people here turn against us because somebody shoots a dog. Shooting that dog was stupid. But you gotta understand what you're dealing with here. These people are in a crisis, as deep as the Great Depression. They ask Washington for help, and all they get's the suggestion they give up their farm that they've had for generations. Well, there's not much I can do about that. hold it against these people that they're vulnerable. 
These people are going under. Why don't we try a reward? Maybe even one of his posse buddies will turn him in. We'll try it. The public's getting the perception that a grandfather in bib overalls outsmarting the best law enforcement officers in the country. Until we find him, they're right. Great. Thank you. Come on, Winters, let's you and I wrap this thing up. Are you Scott Fall? I want to turn myself in, but it, it was self-defense. There was nothing we could do about it. They came at us. You're under arrest. He'll have to come with us. Well, wait, I've got a note. Gordon Call gave me a note. Uh, my, my, my wife has got it. She has it. Shauna? People were, were killed out there, but nobody was murdered. This was self-defense. You go on home, ma'am. It, it was self-defense, Leland. Don't give us that self-defense crap. You gunned them down. I already told you they came after us. That was their job! Call was wanted on a federal warrant. We don't recognize the federal government. You're married, aren't you? Yes, sir. Got a bunch of kids? Yes, sir. You work, you farm, you make a living at it. Yes. You're not a farmer anymore. You're a killer. You're going to prison and never see those kids again. You're not going to get anywhere that way. What? People around here, they look at you and they see big government. They don't think what happens in their lives matters to you. I've been an FBI agent. Nearly 20 years now. You know what that means? It means I'm the guy who gets called in when the local law won't do what has to be done. I'm not here to run for office. I'm here to find a killer. Well, if you'll slow down a little, people will be more inclined to help. How do you figure that threat the posse put on you? Well, they just want to remind me that I am local. And I ought to be listening to them instead of the feds. So you're listening? That's a funny thing. When they shot my finger off, I became hard of hearing. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Sure, okay. Would you tell your father that Sam Evans is here, all right? Emma, up on the porch. I'll take care of it. I need a place to stay. Sure. Come on in. We've always got room for a Christian patriot. You're telling me you didn't agree with your husband? Gordon just went crazy over this tax thing. Why was that? I don't know. He'd sit up till 3 o'clock reading pamphlets and books. And just got on a track against paying taxes, and he couldn't get off it. We almost lost the farm to the IRS for back taxes. What happened? I had my brother pay off the lien. Gordon went even crazier, threw me out of the house. I had to beg him to take me back. Why did you do that? I love Gordon. And I didn't want to lose you or either. <sighs> Freezing. Oh, uh, here. Help yourself. You were always idolized, Gordon. It was Gordon who taught Yuri to hate the niggers and Jews. What does a little boy know about those things? Um, when did your husband get involved with the posse? That was later. Gordon believed these things before the posse came along. When it did, he just fit right in. 
After that, it was hopeless. You thought there'd be trouble? I just didn't want them to get Yuri. Mrs. Cole, maybe we can help each other. Mrs. Cole would like to make a statement. She will take no questions, but I will afterward if you wish. Mrs. Cole? I would like to appeal to my, my husband, Gordon Call. Gordon, please turn yourself in. Our son is hurt. Two men are dead, and others are going to be if you continue this. I don't want you dead, too. Please, Gordon, they won't hurt you if you come peacefully. Please, Gordon, I love you. Mr. Starkey, I'm Richard Maberly, and this is Leland Winters. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir, but there have been reports that this man was here recently. I'm sure you've seen his picture in the paper. His name is Gordon Call. He murdered two federal marshals in Medina. Yes, sir. I wouldn't tell you where he is, even if I knew. All right, sir. Thank you for your time. These people wouldn't tell you if your foot was on fire. It's the reward offer. We're getting tips from all over. Kansas, Virginia, Wisconsin. We even have a woman up in Billings, Montana, who says she's personally seen call. OK, let's put teams on each one of these. I want to use all resources to track each lead as fast as possible. Is there a Gordon Call here? His tax accountant wants to talk to him. <laughs> sure did. I saw him with my own two eyes. When was this? Last oh, Thursday morning, about 6.45, he had uh, eggs, toast, and milk. How do you know it was Gordon Call? Well, I seen his picture on TV that night and in the papers next morning, so... It was the darndest coincidence. I told my niece right away, and she said I should call the FBI. And you're sure it was the same man? Well, I ought to be. I served him on that corner stool, the one right there. He was sitting right next to Elvis. Elvis? Elvis Presley he was drinking a malt. That's great. Looks like we got company, fellas. Look alive. Good now. Oh, one more. One more. All right, what do I do with these here? Man, up. Go ahead and stow that. All right. Yeah, you got it. Hey, 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 you got it. What are you doing here? Are you Ben Hastings? I am. You own this farm? I do. The FBI, we have a warrant to search this place. We've been informed that Gordon Call is hiding here. Well, he's not here, but I'd be proud to have him. He is a great man. What are you running here? Nothing. We just like to get together once a month for a bivouac. Search it! Excuse me, Hastings. If, if you ask me, that shootout up there in Medina was just a planned assassination attempt for the government to shut Gordon up because of his beliefs. I'm not asking you. Excuse me. Okay, okay. I hear one of base. Uh, we're gonna hold off on target practice. We need a fence down the way. Over. In one, this is base. That's a copy. Fence says to cooperate however you can. Over. Here, one to base. Uh, we've got two teams doing a recon exercise. 
us in the woods. I'll have to send a squad up to tell them what's going on, over. Yeah. Uh, that's a good idea, Juan. Be sure to call in before you leave the perimeter, Robbie. One out. This is Unit 1 Niner. Do you need assistance at base? Over. Uh, no, Unit 1 Niner. Maybe. I think you feed an army. They got everything here. Everything except Carl. Special request for all you listeners here in Stutzman County. Can you believe it? To tell you the truth, I never could abide Gordon's hatred of blacks and Jews. As far as I can see, people are people. But you're in the posse comitatus with him. That doesn't mean we see things eye to eye. The posse comitatus, in its purest sense, doesn't recognize authority above the county level. And I believe that. I'm in the posse because I believe we have to be self-reliant at the local level. Because no pack of bureaucrats in Washington is going to do anything more than talk us to death. I work for Washington. You don't have to tell me about bureaucracy. <laughs> Maybe you ought to get out of government work and get yourself a real job. Meeting took place at your clinic? That's right. What happened before everybody left? Fall saw Winters out on the road. I was going to ask Winters what, uh, what he was up to, but Colin said he already knew. Wait a minute. Colin knew? That's what he said. Do you have any idea where Carl went? I can't help you there. I will tell you this, Carl is probably in the posse's underground. Maybe you could smoke him out, but uh, he has a lot of help. Posse knows every move you make. How's that? Posse comitatus is everywhere. The winners, where? I'll be right there. About 10 minutes. south on a route 10 by the interstate. Maverly calls, tell him to meet me out there.
I'm okay. I was just on my way to pick you up. What the hell happened? Guess I had a blowout. I used to go hunting out here. Never gonna be the same now. You ever go hunting? No, I was a city kid. I like it. Being outdoors, walking the fields, taking your time. You gotta try it sometime. That's where he killed Bob Tisher. Muir got it up there. I ran up the hill to the ambulance. What you doing out here, Winters? Hi, Earl. This is uh, Agent Maberly, the FBI, and we just came out to have a look around. The FBI? I'd like to ask you some questions, Mr. Mackey. We didn't have nothing to do with this. Come on, Earl. We know that. Come over to the house. We'll get some supper. You don't want to be any trouble. It's no trouble. It's nothing fancy, but you're welcome to it. Go ahead and sit down, Mr. Maggie. You know what really teed me off? Is that no one told us what was happening until it was too late. It just started going too fast. Yeah, but they put us in danger. The walls of this trailer ain't thick enough to stop a bullet. Kids were just sitting down to supper. I was holding the baby. They didn't call us till it was happening right outside. You could have warned us, Leland. I didn't know. I. I didn't know it was going down right here. Those marshals ran the show. I was just along for the ride. Yeah, well, no one from the government ever apologized either. If it's any consolation, I'm from the government, and I'm sorry you were put in danger. Biscuit, Mr. Maberly. Thank you. You're hot. I'm sorry those men were killed. Tell me something. Did you call the ambulance that came that day? No. There was no time. We were, uh, we were busy getting out of the way. When did the ambulance arrive? Right after the shooting stopped. Miss Mackey? It's great. Who do you think tipped Carl? You think I did it? No. Did anybody else know what was going down? Larry knew. Chief Douglas. How did he know? I told him. I had to go by his house to get a radio for the stakeout. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. Really? How did the ambulance get there? I suppose Larry ordered it. He was with it when I came over the hill. Why did he do that? I don't know. I was just glad it was there when it was. Is Douglas in the posse? Maybe. I never thought about it. You want me to go in and get him? Yeah. Ask him to come out here a minute.
What do you want? I want to know your connection to the posse comitatus. I don't have any connection to the posse. How'd you know to take the ambulance out to that shootout with Carl? Are you accusing me of something? No, sir. Then you get the hell out of my face. Because I got nothing to say to you. Nothing. Time while I hit the can. Talking to me? Yes. Yeah. Fill her up. Okay. Okay. Just stop washing right now. What is this? Never mind what it is. Now you get down. Come on, I get down on your knees. Down, down. That's it. You're good. Don't shoot me. I wouldn't hurt you. I wouldn't hurt you for the world. <laughs> That's for the time I spent in Leavenworth. Bro. How you doing, Gordon? Well, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a little tired and uh, I'm cold and I've been running around just a little bit. You want a place to stay? I appreciate it. We'll have to find you someplace else. The FBI was here. They know we're friends. Oh, no, I've been... Oh, no, no. I got a friend they know nothing about. We can always find a safe place for you here in Arkansas. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know Ben Hastings, and this is Hi, Sam Aaron. Evans. How are you? Hi. Pleased to meet you. Nice Sam's meet. gonna be staying with us for a while. We were just going out to visit some friends. Okay, you better get in the house before you get wet. Karen, I want you to promise me something. Don't mention to anyone uh, Sam being here. Why? Who is he? He's just a friend of Ben's. Okay. Thank you.
Come on in. Well, I, I may have some good news. Lester Tompkins is plea bargained. He's agreed to cooperate with the investigation and testify against the others. I offered the same deal to Lundy. He told me to take a hike. He wants some posse comitatus lawyer to defend him so he can trash the IRS. I'm gonna pan fry his ass. When can I talk to Tompkins? Anytime. Great. How did Call know the marshals were coming after him? Leland Winters. He was out on the road watching us. Winters not a marshal, he's local. Gordon knew Winters was with him. How could he have known that? Lundy told him. Lundy made a phone call and found out. Who'd he call? I don't know. Could have been Larry. He wasn't at the meeting. Larry Douglas? The police chief? Yeah. Gordon and Larry go way back together in the posse. What do you two want now? Same thing. Gordon Call. Well, last time I heard, he wasn't around here. Well, you hear a lot, don't you? Well, now, what's that supposed to mean? I'll tell you what that means. That means it was you who tipped Gordon Call that we were coming to get him. That's a load of bull. We know you were on the phone to Wilbur Lundy before those officers went out there. They were fellow officers, Larry. You could have got me killed. We could pull you in as an accessory to murder. At the least, we could get you for conspiracy. But I want to put an end to all this. I've been up here a while. I know times are tough for the people here. And I know the government hasn't made it any easier. If I was a farmer, I'd probably be the leader of your damn group. What do you want from me? I want to send a message to Call. I can't get the Call. I suspect you know people who can. Tell them we can make it easier on Yori if Call gives up. gentlemen. Despite what you've read in the newspapers or seen on television, this is not a trial in which income tax is an issue, nor is it a trial in which Christian righteousness nor any sort of satanic evil is an issue. Murder is the issue. It's the sole issue. Where are you from, Sam? North Dakota. Well, what are you doing down here? I don't know, I guess. I guess I don't have uh, any other place to go. I mean, the, the commies and the Jews, they ran me out. You miss your family? I miss my son. They live in North Dakota. They sure do. Why don't you just go back? I don't know. Maybe... Maybe because my name is uh, Gordon Carr.
better listen to what this man has to say. We've had words from some of our people. They say the FBI might be willing to make a deal in this case. That's what they're saying. They'll go easier on your boy. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, uh... I'm not going to make a deal with the, uh, servants of Satan. It's your son. I know that. I know, I know it's my son. God bless him. He's an upright soldier of Christ. I'm not going in there, and I'm not going to make a deal with the government, period. Nice of you. Ben, I want Mr. Call out of here. Someday the law is going to come for him. My family lives here. I don't want them hurt. I don't know if I can do that, Karen. If you heard him. I think he wants a fight. He may not care about his family, but I care about mine. Okay. Let's see what I can do. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joan Call, not guilty of all charges. We find the defendants, Yori Call and Scott Fall, guilty of second degree murder and the death of In the deaths of Ken Muir and Robert Cheshire. We find the defendant Wilbur Lundy not guilty on the seven assault charges and guilty on charges of conspiracy and harboring a federal felony suspect. Here they come, come now. Uh, Mr. Krebs. No, Mr. Krebs. Mr. Krebs. Are you disappointed with the second degree murder verdicts? Nah, murder's murder. As far as I'm concerned, justice was done. It's done fairly. Mr. Krebs, over Agent here. Agent Mabry, were you disappointed? No, sir. When Gordon Calls brought to justice, it'll be first degree murder. Uh, Mr. Krebs, you have to explain to me. Federal building. I need someone in the FBI. Maverly? Yes, sir. Classing game with the Little Rock office. What do you know about this woman who turned in the tip? Is she on the level? You'll have to decide for yourself. She'll only talk to the agent in charge. What are you going to get? I'm going to get a sneaker for I want to. What would you do? Mrs. Robinson? Yes. I'm Richard Maberly. Um, maybe we should sit over there. Well, you girls sit here quietly. Be right back. Um, this man, Sam, stayed with my father until just a few days ago. I don't want my father involved. I want him to have immunity. That's not something I can guarantee. Um, there's a reward, right? $15,000. We'll order in a minute. How do you know this man, Sam, is Gordon Cowell? Well, he told me he was. We have some proof. 
something with his fingerprints. A letter. Um, here's the book he read while he stayed with us. You're one of them. You work for the Jews. What? One of whom? That's the Mason's ring. The Masons are controlled by the rich Jews who want to bring this country under the control of their one world government. This ring is from my college fraternity. I'm a law enforcement officer. I work for the FBI, not uh, Jews, or Masons, or anyone else. If such a conspiracy exists, I am not aware of it or a party to it. My job is to find Gordon Call and arrest him for the murders of two U.S. Marshals. Please, I can't do it alone. He thinks you're closing in on him, and he's going to fight. I'm scared we're going to be in the way when you do. I want you safe and alive. I want Gordon Call safe and alive. Where is he now? Um, he must be with Ben Hastings. He's holed up out there with an arsenal. From everything I hear, he likes to shoot. He does, and he's one wily old bastard. Gene, want yeah. you to meet Richard Maberly? Hey. Ah, so he's chased your bad guy down in our neck of the woods. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. OK. You're going to be staged here while the uh, SWAT team surrounds the house from behind. State troopers back us up on the highway. Once we've moved in, we'll order the people out of the house with a loudspeaker. They won't come out. We go to the tear gas. They're already making T-shirts with Carl's picture on them. If we kill him, the posse will make this hometown hero a martyr. So I want to take him alive. The bottom line is, we take him. OK, guys, let's go. All right, y'all. Go. Get it, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. All we need now is a dog. What's that? Nothing. Turn it off. Where are you going? Check on my cattle. Leave the gun and get out of the truck. Now.
Who else is in the house? Just my wife. Yeah, well, let's see. We're gonna search the house. No. You got a search warrant? Yes, we do. Tim, it's Gordon Cole. We got a man down! You can run up to his back! Enough of this crap. It's Carl. Let's go! Here, get these people out of here.
How are you doing? All right. I heard he killed another officer in Arkansas. Shot him through a seam in his vest. Well, at least you got him. The others are convicted. I didn't get him alive. I wanted a trial. I wanted a conviction. He wanted to be a martyr. He got what he wanted. Well, let me get you to that plane. So, what are your plans now? Thought I might run for sheriff. Do. You'd make a good one. Ben and Sally Hastings were convicted of conspiring to harbor a federal fugitive. Ben was sentenced to five years in prison. Sally's sentence was suspended. Yori Call and Scott Fall remain in federal prison. Joan Call continues to reside in North Dakota. Robert Cheshire and Ken Muir were the 55th and 56th U.S. Marshals killed in this century. Gene Matthews was the ninth sheriff in the state of Arkansas to be killed in the line of duty.